Superintelligence is a book by Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at Oxford University, that seeks to answer a few questions about artificial intelligence. Can we develop robots significantly smarter than ourselves? How would we go about making these robots? What are the consequences of developing a superintelligent AI? And what are some strategies for dealing with this problem? In other words, is an insane Terminator-like situation possible? The book starts by talking a bit about how far we've come in terms of AI, then talks about the different ways we can get to superintelligent artificial intelligence, or SAI for short, with the most promising seeming to be what's called a seed AI, which is a computer that isn't very smart to begin with but is very good at learning. The second best option is called whole brain emulation, which is just computerizing a human brain and then making it smarter by tweaking various things, but the amount we could do this probably wouldn't take us nearly as far as the seed AI in the long run. Ideally, we can take the seed AI up to being smarter slightly smarter than people in all areas, and this is where the fun begins. Because if making robots is a thing that takes smarts, and we've created a robot that's smarter than us, then the robot can do a better job at improving itself than us humans could ever do. So now we have the robot just making itself smarter and smarter. This is called an intelligence takeoff. Now because of the fact that on a scale of brain power from a tiny roundworm to some omnipotent god, every human who has ever lived takes up a tiny space on the scale. As humans, we notice the difference in smarts between the village idiot and Einstein is ginormous, but in the grand scale of things, we don't take it up too much space on the scale. Robot will probably go from just not quite as smart as us to like 20 times smarter than humans very quickly. This would make it so that the robot's goals would have a huge effect on the world, and it's quite likely that we'd end up in a situation where the robot takes over the world and creates one big country due to having all this power. Ideally, that would be a situation where we welcome the robot, and not one where it comes shooting lasers at us while we scream at the top of our lungs. Being able to take over the world like that if need be is called a decisive strategic advantage. The only time that would have ever existed in modern history would probably be the US from 1945 to 1949, as they were the only country with nukes at the time, but that might still have not been enough to easily take over the world with. So the SAI scenario is new in a lot of ways. So the question here is, how do we make it so a robot with a decisive strategic advantage would be easily controllable by humans and it, that it would have our interests at heart and not blow up everything instead? This question is called the control problem and is the main focus of the second half of the book, with the first half being about how we might get to superintelligence. At first glance, the control problem might seem very easy. As long as there's nothing in the robot's code that makes it want to kill everybody, why would we need to worry about it? Well, say for example you want to make a superintelligence that uses its vast power to make as many paperclips as possible, as efficiently as possible. However, what the robot would interpret that as would be to stop at nothing to make paperclips, which would probably mean the robot turns the entire solar system into a giant paperclip factory, even though there would be no humans left to use the paperclips that were made. So why don't you just give the robot the instruction not to kill everybody? Well, that might conflict with some of the robot's other goals, and it might decide to overrule the not killing everybody theme. There's also many other problems with telling the robot not to kill everybody. What problems? Well, read the book to find out. If this interested you at all, you can get the book, link in the description, and you, uh, and you can find out about these other problems as well as various strategies to solve the control problem, more in-depth looks at the stuff I've already covered in the video, what the historical context of all this stuff is, as well as many other things. If you don't like academic, science-y books and find them boring or confusing, I recommend reading the introductory stuff at the beginning, reading chapter 1, and then skipping to chapter 8, which is where the interesting stuff about the robots possibly killing us starts. As the chapters between those bits can be quite slow. Other than that, I'll have a bunch of links to this stuff in the description, so you can check those out if you're interested. And now I shall leave. I hope you enjoyed the video.